I want to thank our sponsors, Athletic Greens, who created AG1, one of the most innovative packets of supplements, including 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. These ingredients support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. I personally started using Athletic Greens and love the way I feel in the morning after I drink it. And I no longer have energy crashes throughout the day. And the best part is that it's delicious. The founder of Athletic Greens created AG1 because he experienced a ton of gut health and ended up on a complicated and expensive supplement routine to recover. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash yasmine. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash yasmine, Y-A-S-M-E-E-N, to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hi, my name is Yasmin Terehi, and this is Gateways to Awakening, where we host one-on-one conversations with leading experts in wellness, well-being, and spirituality. Today's episode is about developing intimacy and stronger connections with Lisa Kalfas, a heart-led human connection facilitator, experienced designer and coach, and the founder and chief connector of Firestart Connections. She's deeply passionate about helping people create strong, authentic relationships by elevating conversations from small talk to real talk to ignite a more connected life and workplace culture. She's the creator of Connection Hour, a powerful experience that ignites meaningful connections and conversations to deepen relationships. She's on a mission to help professionals and teams have better conversations to connect better with anyone. I'm so excited to welcome Lisa to the show. We recently met in Palm Springs at an event, and I was so overcome with her ability to create intimate conversation in a very short period of time. So I think that you will learn a lot from this conversation and episode. All right. Welcome, Lisa, to the show. Thank you, Yasmin. It's such a pleasure to be here today to enjoy some more meaningful conversation with you and really explore my favorite topic, connection together. (laughs) Likewise. Uh, So Lisa, so what are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about connection and developing intimacy? Yeah. Wow. Such a great, powerful question to start and kick us off. And I have learned a lot about connection in so many different facets, both in business and in personal life. And there are probably a few really strong misconceptions that come across the board. And certainly the first I would say is that people really believe that in order to build stronger connection and intimacy, you need a lot of quantity of time versus it being really the quality of time. And so often that gets in the way and people feeling that they need to really spend a lot more time with people in order to build that level of intimacy. And it's amazing how fast you can actually create it. Um, The second thing that is a misconception is that we often feel that we have to wait to really show more emotions and be more vulnerable and that that happens over time slowly. And really that is definitely a misconception. And there's a different levels of cadence and vulnerability that we can experience. But so often people misconceive vulnerability for really only meaning that it's sharing your deepest fears and your challenges and that you certainly need to wait, you know, to open up into some of those depths, but really in the simplest form, vulnerability can just be about sharing emotions and any type of emotions. And it's also really 
kind of helpful, I think, for introverts um, to kind of understand that, you know, what we are really experiencing and, and kind of believing is like to just skip some of that surface level of just like what you are doing in the moment and then really just dropping more into the emotion, which really helps an introvert feel really, really comfortable and confident in any situation. Um, and the third misconception I would say that I hear a lot is just that relationships are meant to be long lasting and all relationships are. And really that is a misconception because it's okay and natural if relationships shift. Right, right. Wow. So I want to unpack those a little bit. And I love that first a misconception about time because you know we've we've spent uh, a couple you know hours at this point on the on the phone and then we met once in person. I actually feel really close to you. <laughs> and I, I mentioned that to you the first time that we connected. We dropped in and um, had many conversations and I felt so seen and so heard. And I think that piece to me is um, you know it's there's a lot of people who don't really know how to engage in that way. And it's very obvious that you have developed um, an, an understanding of of how to connect, right? So um, can you share a little bit more about some of the practical tips that you use to help people deepen their connection? Um, and then we can unpack some of the other misconceptions because I, I thought they were great. But yeah, we could just start with that with some some ways to engage, like what really worked um, in our first conversation. Mm, yeah. So I think the keys in terms of how to really connect better are simple but powerful. And the three things that I truly believe and have experienced and done a plenty of research around as well um, are the first is being curious and asking better questions. The second is really listening mindfully. And the third is telling stories. And so if I can share just, you know, the kind of the simple tools that really anyone can have um, and, and really just put into practice every single day would be before you're really connecting with others, the first thing you need to do is actually just connecting with yourself. And when we are connected more with ourself and we're more grounded, then our energy shows up so much better for others. So it's so critical to first really, really be connecting in yourself. And people have various different methodologies and practices to do that. The tool that I love is in presencing. And I often will do breath work and really just take, you know, three deep breaths, like before walking into a conversation or a meeting and really just like allowing for myself to slow down and calm. And if you're triggered, this is also a really, really powerful tool in order to really just pause for a moment. Um, I also take lots of walks in nature and, and meditation and all of these things are just practices to cultivate presence and calm so that we're showing up best for others. But then in terms of how we connect with others and become really more masterful conversationalists, um, you know, it's really about learning to cultivate more curiosity and care and compassion and then presence in our conversations. So the specific tools that I love to guide and teach people around is really how to become more curious and ask better questions. And that's all about asking more thoughtful and insightful questions to quickly get below the surface so that you're understanding more of people's emotions and experiences so that you're really gaining more understanding. So same thing when we first met, I was really trying to learn so much more about you of like, what, what's driving who you are and your experiences? What was driving how you were feeling in the moment? And I was just kind of like asking you, like, would you be open to sharing more about why you feel that way so that I can better understand? Um, and those are ways that we can really kind of simply start to better understand someone. And the second tool is around mindful listening. And that is really about being so incredibly present in a conversation without any distractions. A simple tip I always do is if I have a phone around, I will gently turn it over so that subconsciously someone is seeing that I really am just being present in that conversation with them. And that's all that matters right then and there. And if I think that there's some emergency that might happen, I might share um, openly, hey, something might come up. That's the only reason I would look at my phone, but otherwise I'm just there in that moment. And then 
it's really about reflecting back to that person what you've heard. And so reflection is such an incredible, powerful tool so that you're really acting as a mirror for the other person. And you're really just listening in and you're not trying to turn the conversation back onto something about yourself. And you are really sharing anything that makes that person feel seen, heard, or understood. So you might just share back, you know, oh, it sounds like you're feeling, you know, calm or comfortable or uneasy. Like, is that right? And really just trying to reflect what you might have experienced them. Um, and that that's a really powerful tool. And I can share lots of different you know ways that I've seen that be powerful and successful, but um, you really can do all of those things in your personal and professional life every day in a conversation and become that curiosity detective and a really skillful listener. And that will immediately create more intimacy. Mm, amazing. Yeah. I, I love the reflection piece. I think that is so powerful just to, to make sure that we understand what the person is saying. <laughs> um, and I actually want to break this down into two different, um, examples or case studies really. Like one is if you're working with someone who is, um, or connecting with someone who is, of uh, much older or from a different culture. I think that that's kind of where a lot of communication breakdown can happen. And I'll, I'll speak for myself in my own family. I am uh, was born in the U.S. My parents are from another country. I have a lot of friends who are from all over the world. And, uh, you know, oftentimes there, there can be a misunderstanding in the conversation, right? Cultural context, um, you know, religious context, uh, location context, right? There's, and so how do you, if you're not understanding someone, and even if let's say you're doing this reflection, you're not getting it, um, what, what do you, what then, or what, how do you work with people who are in these very different cultural contexts? Yeah. So it's a couple of different layers to that. So, you know, at the, at the highest layer, uh, cause I work with a lot of different in companies and teams that have global teams and are really managing the dynamics of different cultures within their organization. And so I see a lot of the different dynamics. And so a lot of times it's really first just slowing down to make sure you're asking for clarity because so often the misconceptions and misunderstandings happen because we are not actually really understanding what that person is thinking or feeling or what they might believe or share it in a particular opinion. And so we are creating our own interpretation of that or story in our head. And then that will then really impact the interaction. So the first thing is, is really just to kind of like slow down and ask for clarity, but making sure that we do that in a way that we are monitoring our tone. So it comes from a place of genuine curiosity versus it feeling like you are being attacked in any way, shape or form. And so you might just really start just be like, Hey, um, I, I heard you say this, you know, you start with the reflection, but I'm not sure I'm really clear on what you meant. Can you share a little bit more about that? And really just coming from that place of curiosity. So that would be kind of the first thing in any situation. Um, and then the second is when you're really having conversations with people that might have very different, you know, belief systems, and that comes from their experiences and backgrounds. And so the key is, is that first from a mindset standpoint is to embrace that. Like we are all human and that is the beauty of humanity is all these different experiences. Life is so much more enriching because we have very different experiences and we can really see the diversity of that within our cultures. So it's so powerful to learn from other people and to be able to understand and not feel like we always have to come to common ground and really share the same belief system. It's okay that we don't always have those same belief systems, but it's really the interesting part is understanding why someone has a certain belief system so that you better understand their experiences. So with that, it's really coming to a conversation and really just being curious about what the influences were that they had. So, you know, you gave of cultural context, maybe it's religion or maybe it's political um, and really just being like, Hey, I'd love to better understand why you believe that or what experience you had that really shaped that belief. 
like really coming from it from that perspective, that lens. And then if it is a situation where you're really trying to see if you could get to more common ground, because that's also really important sometimes, whether it's in personal or business context. And from there, when you really, really are first allowing for the space for each side to understand, why do you feel so strongly about that? Then and keep asking the question, then you can better understand, can you find a place that both of those needs might be able to be met? Like for for example, within a professional environment, maybe there's a big project that you might be working on and you're like, there's all these different cultural dynamics. And so you're, you're really trying to get to it, but one particular team that's working on this project might really not want to work through a couple of of days on a weekend because it's a big cultural holiday. Whereas the other team is like, we've got to get this done and we really, really want this to happen. Um, And we're only going to be successful as a team if we are all hands on deck. So you then might be able to understand, well, why, why is it important for each of them within their cultural context and for the other team and what they need? And then come on, well, maybe one team can handle a piece of that you know, before the weekend and then allow for the time that they can be with their family culturally, because that's really important. And then the other part of the team can take it from there and, you know, and, and really be able to work on a different part. Um, and really you're after the big collective vision. So it's really first just kind of always understanding where someone's mindset is um, and then trying to see where you can find that common ground. Oh yeah. I really love that. Um, so Lisa, what, what are some ways that, uh, you know, some questions that you, we should be asking others to feel seen and heard? I mean, you mentioned a couple in your uh, earlier examples, but can you share like, what are some <laughs> ways that we can connect with people, especially if those have very little self-awareness or um, may not actually know what they think, right? Like maybe, you know, the person that you're speaking with is not reflective enough you know, to really understand where they're coming from. So how do you work with those types of people and, and what kind of questions should we be asking um, just kind of generally to, to, to make sure that, you know, others feel seen and heard? Yeah. So, I mean, there's so many different ways that, you know, we can be really, really guiding good dialogue effectively to have someone feel seen, heard and understood. So it depends so much on the context that said, Generally speaking, it's again about asking open-ended and thoughtful questions that are really insightful so that you're really getting to know more about the emotion behind the experience. So for example, um, you know, you might first be meeting someone new and there's simple shifts you can make in when you're first meeting someone to just better quickly understand them. So For example, so often when we're meeting someone, we ask, you know, what do you do? And (laughs) it's such a common question. I personally don't have that question in my repertoire and vocabulary anymore (laughs) because I have learned that there's a simple way to shift that that is so much more powerful and insightful. And instead, I ask, what inspires you? to do what you do, or maybe what inspires you to do what you do professionally. And so by asking it that way, they will share what it is that they do, but they'll share it way more from a place of what truly motivates them and what it lights them up and what their experiences are that might have led them to that. So you get a much richer answer. And through that, you're really seeing and understanding them so much faster. And then from there, then there's so much, you know, more that you can kind of ask in terms of follow-up and, you know, and you'll get more curious because their answer will be so much more interesting. Um, The other simple shift sometimes is so so often we ask like, how are you? Like when you're, or like, what's up? Like when you're first meeting someone and it also doesn't tell us very much because so easily we say, oh, I'm fine. We give a one word answer. (laughs) And it's such a Passover question. Like so many people like ask it, but don't really even wait for the answer. So uh, we don't really even feel like you want to see me. (laughs) And so um, I'd love to just simply ask instead, you know, how are you feeling 
right now. And with, with that, you know, you'll understand a little bit more and they can just answer it with, you know, just one or two words of what they're feeling. And then from there, you can kind of get more curious. So um, I do this all the time, especially when meeting, you know, new people or just checking in with someone. Um, you can do it, you know, as a check-in on a business conversation, or even when you're meeting someone, I had a new connection with someone recently, uh, just last week. And, you know, I asked it in this way and I also, when I get the question asked of me, how are you? I quickly shift it and answer it like I would if I was asked, how are you feeling? So that's really powerful because the response that then I shared, like, oh, I feel really like grounded and nourished and elated. And, you know, and I shared those words and why. And he he was like, whoa, like that was such an enriching, like, first part of our conversation. And he proactively shared that. And so it's a great way to build rapport with people and you can do that and you're empowered to make that shift. So that's like a simple way that to really shift the conversation when you're first meeting new people. And then in terms of deepening intimacy with someone, you can be asking those things as well. Like what inspires you around that? Or it might be a conversation, you know, with a partner or a friend and some tension arises um, and you really just, you know, might need to go deeper and just say like, Ooh, it sounds like your needs for so-and-so are not being met. Like, is that right? Like, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Cause even if they're not skilled in reflection, they at least can be guided into, um, sharing a little bit more about what they're thinking and feeling. I love that question, that follow-up question, is that right? Because um, a lot of people, I think we we assume that we understand what someone is going through or how they're perceiving their reality. But I, I love that follow-up question because it gives them the sort of final answer to say, yes, that was right. Or no, actually, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> I really love that. So Lisa, what are some of the ways that you coach corporate teams and can you walk us through your process and, and talk a little bit about uh, this connection hour that you do with, with teams? Sure. Yeah. I am really deeply passionate about helping people connect better, you know, in business and in life, just like live a more deeply connected life. And so for teams, since we spend so much time also in our day-to-day -day within work, I created and guide a virtual and in-person team building experience that is also a personal growth experience. And it really ignites strong and authentic relationships by sparking more meaningful conversations. So I do that by working with really people first leaders and teams that are 20 people or more across different industries, primarily social impact and tech and wellness and travel and hospitality, but that really, really value culture and curiosity and connection. And that they know that by focusing on building strong, relationships that we can create higher performing teams and also a culture where people love coming to work and they have fun every day because <laughs> we spend so much time in our professional world. So why wouldn't we want to have, you know, really an, an enjoyable experience where we're making the most of it. And I created and designed this experience because, you know, research really showed that we have, when we have stronger connections and friendships at work, we are more engaged. We have higher productivity, more creativity, and retention. And also people are more fulfilled and they live longer. <laughs> so I've learned that connection also really helps employees live a longer and healthier life. So it's so powerful for a leader to not only be able to impact the business results and have that lasting legacy, which is critical within the business, but also to make a positive impact in someone's life, which is just like more purposeful way to live every single day. So I saw that myself when I was a former marketing leader and based on 20 years of really leading and guiding teams before I founded my company, I loved being able to guide and coach and mentor and really create strong engagement and a connected culture. And I saw that there was this challenge that leaders were facing in being able to create really powerful connectivity, particularly in a remote and hybrid team. And to be able to do that also when you're scaling and integrating teams and that employees were feeling really disconnected, isolated, sometimes disheartened. And so more tension arose. 
and leaders had to jump in and navigate more of this conflict. And it's because team members were really feeling misunderstood or they weren't feeling respected or they just didn't feel like they belonged. And so it's so disheartening if you don't feel like you're in a place of belonging, both you know professionally and personally. And so the virtual experience connection hour is delivered via you know, virtual video, um, mostly Zoom. And it's this experience where we bring the teams together and we have, you know, what we would level up uh, organic water cooler conversations or flyby conversations where they have meaningful connection. They learn what creates powerful connection and then how to actually have more meaningful conversation to maximize every single interaction so that we are moving from transactional to true relationship building because we're so busy and we can really, really maximize every moment when we show up with more intention and curiosity. And so that's what I do and I guide and the outcomes have just been like unbelievably powerful in the results for teams. Amazing. And Lisa, can you give us like an, like one of the examples um, that you might use to help people connect? Like, is there a prompt? You said you, you help them figure out a, a new way to basically communicate. Um, Yeah. Can you give us an example just so we can ground in that experience? Sure. So, you know, one of the examples might even just be as simple as, you know, understanding that, um, you know, wins, you talked about this earlier, like, you know, wins and celebrating successes. And those things are really important with your professional relationships um, as well as your personal relationships. Uh, it's so important when we're championing each other. So that energy is, is really, really palpable within organizations and teams. And so, you know, example might be just like, what is something that you are proud of that not many people know? Or what is something that we are celebrating this week? So those are the types of questions and conversations that we might have. And we do that though, not just then professionally. The key is, is that we then also have those conversations personally, because the fastest way to build a business relationship, which there's lots of data around this. And I've learned this personally from personal experience is actually through a personal relationship. And that is challenging for people (laughs) because (laughs) it's breaking out of a lot of comfort zones and a lot of cultural norms where particularly in the U.S. too, we're very much taught and ingrained in our behaviors that we keep personal very different from professional. And I think in the age of the pandemic, we are learning to be more comfortable with that because We are seeing a lot of people's personal lives within a business context. You're on video, you're seeing your your family or whoever's in your household um, right behind you. So you've kind of been naturally, you know, kind of um, forced into that. And, And we're learning why it's actually so important. And I personally had a complete unlock in that in my own life of really being able to recognize the power of showing up personally. And I remember the day that I started to share that in my past experience in marketing at Pete's Coffee. And I shared a personal event that I was going to, and I was typically very mindful of sharing some of those things and I would hold it back. And I remember very distinctly the CEO at the time being so curious about it. And it actually allowed for my team to walk closer towards me versus further away. And I learned very quickly in that moment how important it is to show up fully authentically because then I could bring my whole energy to work. So all of that then leads me to the experience where I really do open up and create a space where it's comfortable. And we create a lot of psychological safety to be able to share your personal experiences and what you might be celebrating then too. And that's why the experience has become so powerful and the measurable, tangible results have been, you know, from single up to 80% increases in trust and understanding and comfort sharing opinions more openly and stronger personal relationships, which all has also improved retention because people are seeing then also the lasting impact that it's had within their cultures and teams 
And even, you know, one of my clients who is the CMO of a global tech company, you know, recently shared with me how grateful she was to have the support in that challenge for a team to learn more about them on a personal level, to then also celebrate their successes together in a way that that was building so much more cohesion and that the leadership team was then just kind of singing um, while the leader then also could participate and sit back and really get to know each other on a truly authentic level. So um, I'm just so heartwarmed to, to hear that. And those are some of the examples of what you might expect in the experience. Amazing. And so you're able to measure uh, the outcome of these experiences. You mentioned like 80% increase in trust. And so that's something that you do after these, uh, these uh, connection hour events, you track like what's happened after the fact. Absolutely. It's so important to have the measurable results because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that this is something that is truly impacting the business and people's lives. And so I very much have always subscribed to a, the balance of you know head and heart. And so from a head standpoint, looking at the data and really being able to share that with decision makers and teams to see what the impact is to then also motivate also the behavior that much more. So we do what would be similar to a culture survey prior to the experience. We also do that after the experience, and then we're able to measure the tangible results from that, as well as then also some of the more heart and the anecdotal. Um, And we also then, I always circle back with leaders and have check-ins, you know, quarterly and um, after six months. And so that then we're also really seeing what the impact might be on a lasting level uh, beyond, you know, after the immersive experience. Right. And I imagine that there's probably um, recurring workshops. You mentioned that you also do six weeks or or more based on what a company or, or team is going through. Yes, absolutely. I have different experiences that might be one-off, you know, 90 minute experiences. And there's, you know, different topics around really facilitating connection. Um, in those. And then I do immersive experiences that would be the core first one that's foundational is six weeks so that everyone is really, really getting on the same page and unlocking this. And then from there, that can also continue at a different level of frequency so that then it becomes even more ingrained in the culture and the behavior, which I love them being able to also partner with companies to have really that like lasting extension, you know, of the team impact. That's so powerful, Lisa. Uh, so I'd love to l- learn a little bit more about your journey. So you were a marketing executive for, you said 20 years or so, and I'd love to know like what made you transition into creating Firestart Connections and doing this type of work? So yeah, I am so grateful for my journey and all the different facets of my experiences that shaped who I am today and what really had me recognize what lit me up the most and also what my superpowers were that then I could really be imparting and in service to others. And so a lot of my journey, uh, there's a lot of these different kind of common themes that then led me to really what became then my purpose around helping people connect better by having more meaningful conversation. And I would say that, you know, from a professional standpoint, I did have a 20 year marketing career and it was in lots of different, you know, industries, um, particularly wine and coffee industry. And really those industries, the common thread was around those being beverages that inherently create connection, like whether it was with yourself or with others. And so I had the pleasure of being able to, you know, create lots of different experiences, you know, for wineries, whether you were connecting, you know, with people around the country or the globe, or also different experiences at our properties, um, and really bringing people together and savoring that and telling stories over a glass, um, and really taking those moments to really drop in and connect. And being able to coach and mentor teams and really shift the culture and so in, in one of my um, 
you know, experiences, we, we really shifted the culture to be one that was leading more with heart and vision and purpose around making time for what mattered, uh, which was inherently about bringing people together and, and connecting. And so, you know, I did all of these, you know, different things within cultures that really shifted and impacted the uh, connectivity of the organizations. And in my personal life, I was always connecting and really, uh, I learned that from a very, very early age and even remember very distinctly, you know, su- kind of helping my dad throw a surprise party for my mom. Um, and that was one of the moments of, of connection in my personal life and the, the early chapter of, of that. Um, and I, I saw very early on the importance of community and being surrounded by loved ones. And so I then really infused that in everything that I did then personally. Um, and I had developed a very deep passion for travel. And so in a lot of my personal life, I've traveled to over you know, 50 countries and I became really passionate about learning through experiences and learning about different people and cultures. And then through the pandemic, I then translated that and started to travel more, um, you know, kind of road tripping across the U S and even did that by buying a camper van. And I traveled all around the country and I was kind of like learning and I was just gifting acts of connection, like really just showing up and really just asking, what do people need? What, what can I do to support them? And in, in all of that, what I learned the most was, wow, it is so fast how people can be uplifted just by dropping in having a meaningful, deep conversation and feeling seen and heard and valued. And so within that, I took kind of like my personal experience and my professional experience and recognized that, you know, people were feeling really disconnected and how could I then shift to be in more service to others. And in my professional life really then was inspired to then be more in service, make impact in that way and share you know, my gifts and greatest passions of the world. And that's what sparked me founding Firestar Connections to really help unlock that and enable that for people and teams. Oh, it's amazing, Lisa. And it's so needed right now. I think a lot of people, frankly, are disconnected with themselves and disconnected with others. And I think regrouping and kind of coming back out into the social atmosphere after the the two years plus uh, of the pandemic, I think has been very challenging for a lot of people. So I think this work is incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, so Lisa, you spent a lot of time really listening and holding space for people and, you know, really in being intentional with how you show up and communicate. So how do you Uh, And I imagine also just there's such an energy expenditure when you're working with corporate teams. So how do you take care of yourself? You know, how do you kind of neutralize this work? Um, Because I, you know, I find that a lot of people complain that they have a very difficult time listening because we're... It, we're sort of ingrained in this culture to uh, to sort of look for the TLDR, like too long, didn't read, like, you know, the Twitter feed, <laughs> uh, you know, just the, that way of communicating. So how do you take care of yourself and how do you ensure that you create um, the energy in your own day to day to be able to, to give back in this way? Mm, I love this question because it is so important. And so often we skip over it because we think we have to be in support of someone else. And that is so important. But the only way that we can be in support of others is if we show up first for ourselves. So I have really honed and cultivated my own practice around this in order to feel really, really energized. And of course, it takes a lot of intention and practice uh, because it involves a lot of patience, like, you know, in, in, in your own life. And I would say that the key for me has really been to learn how to be very, very intentional with my time based on what it is that I know I need to rejuvenate my energy. And so I personally started to really elevate my morning rituals as the way to start my day, as well as then other daily rituals um, that allow for me to rejuvenate and replenish. So for example, in my morning ritual, I do really like a few things, but I then leads kind of into um, 
all the ideal components of my perfect day. So I need all of those things to be in my day in order to best show up for others. So for example, I start my morning with just like presencing and I kind of listen to my body and I embrace kind of the freedom of the lifestyle that I've designed and I don't set an alarm. And so I'm really, you know, having a a great night's sleep with waking up what my body needs. And then I also don't look at my phone right away. So it's, there's a, there's a clear window that I'm not looking at, you know, any technology and I'm just being, um, the second is I then have some morning coffee and I savor that. And then the third is I connect with my mom every single morning in some way, shape or form. And so it's either a video message or a voice memo or a text or a call. And it could be a five minute call where we're just sharing um, one thing that we're grateful for and one intention for the day. And that for me um, is actually like, it's really like rejuvenating and uplifting. Um, And then from there, I'll have these other practices that then I might be connecting, you know, with others throughout the day. And then I go back into a ritual around a daily dance break, because in the midday, it's a great way to kind of relift my energy for myself. And then in the evenings, I will take evening nature, what I call awe walks, um, where I'm pausing and I'm noticing what is bringing me awe and really slowing down and being present. And so all of those practices have allowed for me to then cultivate more presence in my conversations because it is very much about slowing down, being patient, and being in grounded energy in order to then be able to listen well. And it took me years to cultivate the practice of being a more effective listener and a more mindful listener, but I set the intention and then I asked for feedback along the way. And then I started to cultivate more practices that then allow for me to then cultivate more presence. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, can you call me the next time you have a little dance break? (laughs) (laughs) Dance it out on video. (laughs) Yes, we'll totally do that. I love, love, love doing that. And I love sending videos with people. Yes. (laughs) Amazing. I love, and I love the all walks. I love that you check in with your mom and um, it's just, it's so, it's so wonderful to have a ritual to sort of ground yourself into the day too. I think a lot of us just go into autopilot, right? We like wake up, our phone goes off and we just kind of leap into some kind of other person's <laughs> desires for us really. So that's, that's so powerful. And I love, you know, I think for the audience, you mentioned this briefly about your um, van life. And so I find that so amazing that you're able to uh, really drop in in such a serious and deep way with so many different cor- corporates and teams and do all this prolific work. And I love your blog articles. I think that, you know, you're, you're at the cutting edge of connection. I'm going to call you the queen of connection. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you also are able to really live this flexible lifestyle and, uh, and be on the road. And perhaps that's, that's what makes you really good at what you do too. I think, um, yeah, so maybe you could speak a little bit more about that, just what it's like to to sort of have this ex- experience of van life. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is very much suited to myself and my personality and what feeds me. And so that's the important thing is, you know, I learned that I do love to travel and I fully embrace that. And so it's about designing the life and the lifestyle that really feels most authentic to you and enriches you. And so not everyone might be able to, you know, go and travel consistently. um, And that's not what they desire. Um, And, and that is perfectly natural and normal. And at the same time, for me, I chose to do it because it really actually allows for me to fully embody and live what I value so much every day. Because my you know, core values are around love, connection, curiosity, and adventure and play. And so I really get to unleash all of those, um, and cultivate them, you know, consistently through van life. And it allows for me to travel around. And I have met the most incredible people consistently and do that all around the country. And I'm always like continuing to learn about people and engage in different ways. And then also be able to support my loved ones all over the country 
And so it's been incredible to be able to go and see people that I care about and deepen those relationships, friendships and family relationships and stay whenever I, you know, am in a place that I can just kind of go with organized spontaneity and just be, um, and, you know, go and visit, for example, my brother and sister-in-law and nieces and nephews on the East coast and be able to take them to a national park. And, you know, it's, it's really allowed for us to have so many enriched experiences while also then from a business standpoint, it allows for me to be really flexible in where I am to best support my clients that I can serve in different places. And also different retreats and experiences that I can show up for and guide also in person in, you know, certainly a safe way, you know, during the age of the pandemic. So I've loved being able to also travel around the past month. I've showed up and led connection workshops and experiences at five different events um, and the matter of three weeks. And that it's really enabled me to also be able to do that. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, that sounds just so lovely. And I love that you are living true to yourself and um, living true to your core values. And so Lisa, what are some of the things that have surprised you the most on this journey? Hmm. Well, there's so many surprises uh, and beyond the surprises that I've also gifted to people, (laughs) I will say, because one of the things I absolutely love to do because I truly believe the power that surprise has in fostering deep connection is just showing up and surprising people. So I have done that consistently and I did that and surprised my mom for Thanksgiving and am so grateful for the connection that that deepened for us and for, you know, the, what she shared with me around how she, it was the greatest day of her life and that she's never seen, felt more seen loved and connected uh, all at once. And so it's just like every time I think about that experience, like my whole body <laughs> gets warm. So um, it's it's just so powerful when we can surprise people. So I am continuously surprised at the power of surprise and I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh. So anyone can do that in any moment um, and can really tap into the power of that. Um, and the other things that have really surprised me is that, you know, it, it really doesn't, um, like cease to amaze me like that when we're all human and we are all having the same needs, um, in our human experience. And so many people really just desire deep and deeper intimacy, but they don't share that with others. And they think they're alone in their thoughts or fear holds them back. And, you know, there'll be anxieties in social situations that are particular, you know, particularly for introverts. Um, and, and that is so, so, so normal because we have not been taught a lot of these skills in our education. And so it's natural that we don't always know how to really do this very, very effectively. Um, and so, it also then doesn't cease to kind of like amaze me and be surprised at the immediacy of the impact and like the joy and elation when we do show up in these ways. And that also the ways I've been able to kind of guide experiences that enable people to do it faster and go deeper really, really quickly. And the power in that, um, when you do that also consistently and show up with more intention in your conversations. Um, and so I think, you know, many people share with me that they have shared things with me very quickly that they've never told anyone else before. And that never ceases to surprise me. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really kind of sometimes within our first conversation that I hear that. And it's because people are feeling really safe and seen. And that is just our basic human need. So um, I am always so grateful for those interactions and to be able to create those safe spaces that allow for that because the interaction is so much more enriching for them, which I care deeply about, you know, to have positive impact in people's lives. And it's also reciprocal because it's so, so enriching for me too. Oh, beautiful, Lisa. I'm so grateful for the work that you do. And who inspires you today? You know, who are maybe 
books that you've read or a person um, or someone's, you know, someone in your life personal that, uh, that inspires you and why? Mm. Personally, I'm also going to share that my mom inspires me mm. because in her mid seventies, she is still learning and growing every day. And that to me is so powerful and such a gift in this life that when we always stay curious and are lifelong learners, then at any point in time, our life can remain interesting. And so I'm really inspired by how we have been learning and growing together in this journey around communication and compassion. And that she is also now you know, open to learning and growing from me. And that now that relationship then can be even that much more reciprocal. And the work that she's done to become just so much more comfortable in her own skin with her own voice and continue to be expansive and, and learn and grow about how to, um, to, to continue to add years with being young at heart. So that is really inspiring to me. Um, the depths of our relationship and now being, you know, uh, she's now, you know, my best friend and, and that I never, ever thought was possible. So truly, um, truly so grateful for her. Um, and the other people that inspire me that are mentors, even with people that I have not met that I follow have been people like, um, Vishen Lakiani, who is the founder of Mind Valley, and I loved reading his book, Buddha and the Badass, <laughs> and <laughs> really leading organizations with love and a love week that he created. And um, he is you know, phenomenal in being a heart-led leader and a great example of that. Um, I'm really inspired by Rebecca Campbell and her book, Light is the New Black, which really helped unlock for me too, uh, things that lit me up the most that then I could be in more service, you know, in my life around. Um, I'm inspired by Michael Singer, who I just finished his book, Surrender Experiment, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> oh. And, and then, you know, the other, uh, the other people that have been great, you know, inspirations and mentors for me have been Jessica Ansel Coleman, who she is a love activist and also a connection expert and has been a beautiful mentor and friend to me. And she led an experience called gratitude adventures, which I took during the um, kind of the, the start of the pandemic and just learned to deepen my gratitude practice um, and to, you know, really be able to do that in a space, you know, virtually and connect really powerfully and learn from others. Um, and also um, Lauren Pappas, who um, her and, and Allison um, are the cre co-creators of Wake the Talk Up, which is a conscious communication course that I also took to level up my own skills because I loved continuing to learn and grow. I've had about like 5,000 hours probably of investment in myself and my own personal growth, whether it was through leadership mentorship or um, other skill-based training. And so they also um, have, you know, been great, you know, kind of uh, mentors and, and collaborators in the age of conscious communication. Amazing. And what was Lauren Pappas's class called? What Wake the, what is it? It's called Wake the Talk Up. Wake the talk up. Okay. Amazing. And so Lisa, um, we're winding down, but what do you want to tell our listeners about your work as like a main takeaway? What, what is your main takeaway, <laughs> um, as, as the, as the queen of connection and then where can people find you? So I would say my main takeaway is just, you know, life can be so much more enriching when we connect deeply and you are empowered to spark meaningful connection in your conversations and to really maximize any interaction. So I promise you that when you go deeper, faster in any conversation, your intimacy and relationships will truly accelerate and your life will be richer and, and more fulfilling. So um, I encourage you to just remember every single person is interesting and has an interesting story to share and you can learn and grow from every conversation. So think about that when you go into every conversation and it will allow for you to stay present and, and cultivate that deep connection. 
Yeah. So if you want to check um, out any resources, you can certainly visit my website at firestartconnections.com and you can download even some top complimentary tools. I have a toolkit on three keys to connect better, which you know talks about many of the things that we talked about today, and you can go deeper in those practices. And I also share a newsletter to my community where there's lots of stories and tips um, and also events and workshops like deep listening that might be coming up and also on social media, uh, Lisa Kelfis on Instagram or on LinkedIn. And I share some of my favorite conversation starter questions so that you can continue to learn better, more insightful questions to deepen your conversations. Mm, amazing, amazing, Lisa. Thank you so much for your time. We'll leave the link to your website in the show notes. And for our audience, thanks for joining and for listening in this episode. We learned about how to build intimacy and deepen connections with others with Lisa Kelfis. And you can tune into Gateways to Awakening, where we host one on one conversations with leading experts in wellness, well being, and spirituality. Thanks again.